back to who we're supposed to be. What, what do you mean, who we're supposed to be? Supposed to represent for the whole world who God really is. Yeah? Like, you mean we're like his ambassadors? We're his spokesmen. And you, you're definitely an ambassador. You may not know it from looking at me, ladies and gentlemen, but I am the ambassador of the Jewish people. Yes, I, Jessica Fleitman, daughter of the Northern California hippie Hebrews, have been chosen to lead all of us to pear-shaped, curly-haired, nearsighted glory. Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. No need to applause, ladies and gentlemen. I accept my charge as ambassador of the Jewish people as I accept all things with grace and humility. I wasn't always aware of my unique destiny as ambassador of the Jewish people. In fact, when I was young, I thought I was normal. And by normal, I of course mean white. To think back on it now, little Jessica skipping off to school with her Beauty and the Beast lunchbox, thinking she's Anglo. Adorable. But I soon learned that white didn't necessarily only refer to skin color. I wasn't white, I was Jewish. And not only that, but as a Jew, I was expected to know how all Jews felt about everything throughout history and to comment accordingly. <laughs> By the time I'd reached high school, I'd become an expert at fielding all Judaica-related questions, including, but not limited to... Why did the Jews kill Jesus? What's that weird thing you're eating? Why did they do that? Wait, are you seriously trying to tell me you've never had bacon before? Really? How do you live? I went to a high school that was 80% Asian. 80%. If you were to visualize that on a pie chart, the Asian portion would look like Pac-Man eating the other cultures. <laughs> My group of friends was pretty much the only ethnically diverse group on campus, and by that I mean there were a couple of people in it who were not of Asian descent. That may not sound that diverse to you, but trust me, based on how segregated my high school was, we were practically the United Nations. My friends saw past race and religion to the deeper bond we all shared. Deep down, we were all huge nerds. With them, I wasn't just the Jewish kid, I could be the artsy weirdo. But just as I began to feel good and like I was accepted for something other than my Jewish roots, I was reminded of my place in the universe. Hello, this is Mr. Battaglia coming at you from Jessica's 10th grade history class. I'm actually a football coach and a gym teacher, but we didn't have enough uh, history teachers this year. So the principal just stuck me in here because clearly teaching football and teaching about the history of the entire world are exactly the same thing. I'm just finishing up my unit on the Holocaust. Jessica, do you have anything you'd like to add? How does it make you feel to learn about the Holocaust? I was only 15 years old, but I was Jewish, so why wouldn't I want to be singled out in a room full of my peers to make a personal statement about a horrific genocide? I was an ambassador of the Jewish people. It was all part of the gig. It was also part of the gig when a little bit later in the year, Mr. Battaglia assigned me a special project on the conflict in the Middle East. He paired me up with a very nice boy named Assam, who I assume was the ambassador of the Muslim people, and uh, he told us to go nuts. Together, Assam and I proved that even though Muslims and Jews have their differences, we can come together to create the most boring PowerPoint presentation that ever existed. <laughs> Except for that one picture of a camel making a sassy face, which we both agreed was hilarious. When it was over, Mr. Battaglia told us that he thought we'd done a good job, but that he wished we'd put more of our personal passions into the project. You could have done more, he said. I kept thinking about that. You could have done more. Did he mean in terms of the presentation, like more sound effects, more animation? You could have done more. He left it to two 15-year-old kids to provide an entire class's background on the conflict in the Middle East. He'd paired up two kids who he assumed would have opposing loyalties based on their religions, stuck them together, and when they didn't fight or regurgitate tired opinions, but actually created a pretty informative presentation based on facts, we were supposed to have done more? Had he wanted us to fight? Had he counted on it? Or maybe I had it all wrong. Maybe he didn't want us to fight. Maybe he thought that by doing this project, we'd realize that all this fighting was silly, that Assam was my brother and I was his sister, and we'd hold hands and skip off into the sunset, and everyone in the Middle East would look at us and go, wow, if they can do it, why can't we? 
Is that what Mr. Battaglia meant by we could have done more? Well, whatever it was, we'd clearly failed in our roles as ambassadors of our people. And by failed, I mean we got a B plus. <laughs> I told you I was a huge nerd. So fast forward several years and I'm in Israel, the holy land itself. And let me tell you, it is a complete culture shock. It's weird enough living in New York where I'm surrounded by Jews on the daily, but being, I've never been somewhere like New York, where I, like, excuse me, like Israel, where I have the luxury of representing just myself, where I'm not always one Bernie Madoff away from having to hold a press conference explaining that not all of us are like that. So I'm in Israel, and I'm at the Western Wall, and I'm actually thinking about my mom, because she told me once that on her honeymoon to Israel, she went to the Western Wall, and she stuck a prayer in the wall, and what she prayed for was a healthy child. She prayed for me. And let me tell you, it's strange to stand in the spot where someone once prayed for you to exist, but wonderful, too. And my sister, she's on this trip with me, and together we both reach up and we touch the wall. The wall my mother once touched, the wall my father touched on the other side because the wall is separated into two sections by gender. And I don't know it, but the boy I'll fall in love with, he's on the other side of the wall too, maybe where my father once stood. We'll have our first conversation on the way back to the hotel that night, but I don't know that yet. I'm just 